Yeah, answer to both. <laughs> it's Daily. It's Daily. I apologise. But I get called Dally. It's right, Daily. Claire Daly, Star Daly. Daly. Thank you very much. Dilly Dally. Okay, so I'm going to take coronavirus because it's just a complete saturation. Now, my first part of my lecture there suggested that various things had permitted a crackdown, lockdown, and a movement towards tyranny in the state. This is a gradual thing. And as I said at the beginning, that September 11th, which is going, you know, 20 years um, into the past, that I think started the whole thing. This gradual creep, creep, crackdown in terms of our liberty. I think David Icke, though I don't, I don't often reference him, was correct in saying that it's a tiptoe towards tyranny. And when something gradually develops, usually people don't recognise it or they don't respond. It gradually moves on and on and on, bit by bit, as we see with various laws, surveillance, bit by bit by bit by bit, until it's become so tight and so unfree. But I want you to look at the second part at coronavirus. Now, I do believe that coronavirus is part of that. Coronavirus has obviously caused a crackdown, a lockdown, a restriction of movement. People have been stopped from flying. People have been kept inside their homes. You are getting text messages to stay, stay indoors. So there is definitely a tightening and a inhibition of freedom. But I think coronavirus deserves um, another sort of analysis. I, I cannot remember a time when such a media saturation has occurred. Uh, perhaps um, the, the death of Diana, which was enormous. It was everywhere in the world. I think even parts of Africa had the death of Diana. Um, it, it, it was disproportionate, fair enough. But with coronavirus, every media outlet is aping the same message. Even the broadsheets that you would expect to be representing something more balanced. It seems to be unanimously um, a um, same message. For that reason, I think it deserves to be looked at in a different way. It's, it's massive, apparently. It deserves everyone's attention, from the small school in the community to um, national security agencies, international airports. It's the only subject being discussed, and for that reason, excuse me, I think something else is at play here. And I think it would be remiss of me not to devote the, the final part of the lecture to the coronavirus and what I think it, it may be presaging. Now, because the media saturation is so great and the immediacy and level suggest something else afoot, and that thing that's afoot my conversations with a few people feel that there is a distraction tactic with um, coronavirus and usually if y you distract from something very unpalatable by having a blanket message which takes away from the real message that should be aired. Okay, so I'm going to look at what I think may be happening across the world. And indeed, it's not just myself. I've talked to a number of people who feel that globally something is happening with the actual superpowers, which is perhaps more immediately dangerous and presents a real security threat. So what I'm positing here is the, the, the security threat that they're suggesting we should be afraid of is not the real one. The real security threat is something that is happening globally with the superpowers at a military level. So I'm going to go back in history here now to look at the main superpowers. So um, obviously you, you always have to look to America, what's happening. 
and you look at Donald Trump, he's trying to get, you know, another term. And if we look at Putin, he's trying to get another term. Now, Putin is, is, is not due, he's supposed to be out, he's had everything he can have. So, when superpowers and, and main leaders try and get in another term, there's a thing that they've used in the past, and we know ourselves from a previous analysis of one of our leaders in the past, Margaret Thatcher. Now, Margaret Thatcher was trying to get re-elected. It's long in the analysis after her time in office been seen that the Falklands War was something that actually um, she rode to victory on, even though it wasn't a victory, and she got another term in office. Because it's long been seen as war, especially with America, as a, as a, a mobilising factor for nations. They have a war leader. There's nothing that America likes better than, than a leader who takes them to war. It's deeply imbu imbued in the, uh, the psyche for us to be victorious. And therefore, I think that the coronavirus is disguising something else which is a lot more ominous. Okay, so the Falklands War, of course, Margaret Thatcher needed another term in office, undeniable. And a lot of commentators, historians, after the fact, felt that she precipitated this incident, the Malvinas, in order to get that second term and to be um, a war leader. War is good for leaders. This, this is undisputable, going back to, to, to the wars that, that old uh, military men used to prosecute. So I, what I'm suggesting is that the coronavirus is causing a lockdown in terms of security and freedom. It's creating a sense of fear. This fear and panic uh, has become pandemic. But I, what I'm suggesting is that there is something else going on in the world and they need to flood all the media houses to such an extent that um, what's, what should really get reported is going under the radar. That's what I believe, and indeed it's not just my own supposition. And for that reason, you know, unfortunately, I know you're coming here today to discuss things relative to uh, New Horizons, but um, I owe it to you to look at conflicts and warfare and, and, and global affairs. Reagan and Afghanistan, like Thatcher. Reagan prosecuted various interventions in South America, but it's long been viewed that Afghanistan was a way for him to, again, ride that crest of a victorious military leader. He mobilised against Russia, although we know it was, it was a complete disaster. The American people saw him as a victorious war leader and... Um, his military presence in Afghanistan and in South America has long been seen as one of the main reasons that he was re-elected time and time again. So we know that war is used by governments as a way for them to maintain their power. So that is what I'm suggesting is perhaps going on here. And what is not being reported, and this is not really the terrain of New Horizons, but... Um, what's not being reported is actual mobilisation of troops uh, around the world. Um, Turkey at the moment um, is absolutely opening those doors to the refugees coming into Europe. And the, the, the action of that is inciting a lot of venom from America. But do any of us actually see any of that in our news media? No. We see the first, second, third, fourth story to do with coronavirus. Yet, on the border of Europe, we have a major incident there that is whipping up all the main superpowers, including the whole of Europe, that has an interest in keeping that border tight. So more refugees from Syria and all those countries don't come into Europe. But this is not actually in the news. No, we see the coronavirus. So again, I put it to you that we are being told um, a lie in that the, the real story uh, remains unreported. 
So that is perhaps where I'm at at the moment. And I think I'm perhaps going too far in pushing it beyond that. But what I can say is that this militarisation that's taking place in the world now is not even on the fourth page of the main broadsheets. It's not even in the main stories on the news. I, I doubt that many of you are actually aware of this and it, it's not something you've come here to listen to today, but it would be remiss of me not to include this as what I consider a media distraction. And this is a natural corollary of the media's attempt to create fear and, and mistrust through various incidents of which coronavirus is a part. So I open up a wider debate about actual truth in the media and the way that it's been used not only to inhibit um, our freedoms and create a sense of fear, but it's also been used as a main distraction tactic. That distraction tactic is distracting us from a real risk, a real threat to our safety through um, militarization in the form of America, Turkey and Russia. And this is undisputed and this is unreported news. But yeah, we see coronavirus everywhere. So I see ourselves as citizens as not only losing our freedoms in, in some spurious attempt to protect our security, but being lied to about the real security threat to us, which is, or I would say, is a militarisation of the main superpowers. And that is, remains unreported. So I want to conclude, possibly at this point, by suggesting that... Um, the, the action I would like us all to take would be to question the surveillance, the lockdowns, the crackdown, but also to pay an interest in what our governments are doing abroad in terms of our presence militarily. But indeed, a lot of people do not engage with um, what, where, where our army is stationed. But to be fair, we are not given access to that information Military operations are classified, black operations are classified, but the real security threat to, to our well-being, physical uh, and otherwise, is something that's not getting reported. And I, I want to end perhaps with a very worrying um, conclusion that the stake of the world's safety is, is perhaps at, um, um, a precipice. Now, I did a talk previously where um, I introduced the atomic calculator. Now, um, the, the magazine which, which comes out regularly said that the atomic um, clock was at two minutes to. Now, so I consider that perhaps it's predicted that a major world um, incident it, it, it is imminent. This is this is reported in a certain magazine, and therefore it could be that this um, crazy amplification of the coronavirus could be suggesting a distraction from something that um, is very serious. I'm not suggesting that we're we're on the crux of World War Three. Indeed, that's been dated to something like 2050. But a lot of people feel that there is some major military conflict um, about to happen. Um, but indeed, the world would not find out about this because we have the coronavirus saturation.